Hello everyone, my name is Fear Dragon, and welcome to yet another Patreon vlog. That's a day or two late, sorry about that. But, uh, do have a nice little couple of updates. So first of all, for those who are tuning in maybe for the first time, Patreon vlog is just something that was one of my Patreon goals, and I give uh, updates on what's up with me, and then at the end I talk about just a random topic that I decide upon. Um, so for this week... Going over, first of all, where Patreon money is going, as always, still going to NA Latter Heroes. It's July's money is going to NA Latter Heroes. August's money is planning to go into NA Latter Heroes. And we actually do have uh, more money for month number two. So I'm looking forward to uh, that. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about NA Latter Heroes. So you can see over here, this is sort of the result for uh, week number three, our final week for the month of July, our very first uh, month of any Latter Heroes. So you can see over here we have, oh man, this this guy right here, this guy Arthur um, messages me, you know, a couple of, he's been registered for a while, but he messages me and says, hey, so uh, top, top, top one, oh, number one on NA Ladder gets uh, money. And I'm like, yeah, you know, top two get money. And I was like, just message me back. Okay, I win. And within 12 hours, uh, I think like 24 hours before the actual ladder lock for week three, Arthur is number one. <laughs> he went from like, I don't even know, something like rank 150 or something to rank number one in tw within like 12 hours. It was absurd. But uh, congratulations to Arthur getting first place. Jon Snow not too far behind in second place. And uh, Jon Snow definitely the most consistent player for any ladder heroes so far has gotten a second place, uh, second place, first place and second place. I know he got... Second place to state week one, and they ended up scoring also in a week two and week three. But a big congratulations goes out to a John Snow, as you can see over here as we move down. As a congratulate everyone else, of course, who earned some points. But now we're going to be talking a little bit about the monthly finals. So you can see over here, I have slightly uh, smaller text, but you can see here are the standings at the end of the month. We have John Snow leading with 47 points, an absurd number of points. A really good, well done by John Snow. Um, Ender leading or uh, coming in second with 41 points. Bioice with 37. State with 36. Uh, EJK with 33. No Regret with 32. Drunken Boy with 27. And Jim Rising with 21. And those are going to be the eight players that are playing in the monthly finals for NA Ladder. So big congratulations out to them. Going to be playing the very, very first one. I'm excited for it. Even though it's going to be five Zergs, two Terrans, and a Protoss. <laughs> A uh, lot of ZVZ going to be coming up, but of course, uh, for those who are wondering how the bracket's going to shape up, it's not going to be totally random seeding. It's going to be seeded based on how they kind of performed up here. So Jon Snow versus Jim Rising, Ender versus Drunken Boy, Bio Ice versus No Regret, and State versus EJK. So should be a fairly interesting uh, finals, and I'm looking forward to that. That is already scheduled now. This is part of the reason why I sort of delayed the vlog a little bit, because I want to get out the announcement of the date for the monthly finals. That's going to be... Saturday, August 1st at 4 p.m. Pacific. Uh, that's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern. And if you're anywhere else, you'll have to probably just Google whatever your time zone is conversion. So 4 p.m. Uh, on Saturday, August 1st at uh, that specific time. So hopefully I'll see you guys there. I'm uh, still going to be looking for my co-caster and everything. I still got to get everything organized, but all the players are confirmed that they'll be able to make it. I'm really, really excited about that, especially since uh, one of the people that I was a little bit worried wouldn't be able to play was State. He has moved back from North America to Korea now. And uh, I think he's also, you know, busy with I Am Shenzhen, about to travel over there and everything. And he's trying to focus on that. So really, really grateful that State is going to be able to uh, participate. Now, one thing that uh, I am compromising on is the fact that because we're starting at 4 p.m. Pacific and because casting every single series live would end up forcing the players to wait for a very, very long time. And uh, for East Coasters, it's going to get pretty late, I think. we I decided to not do a cast of every single game in the round of eight. So I might go back and YouTube cast or something the uh, all the remaining round of eight games. But for the purpose of the live tournament and the broadcast, we're going to do probably one game, maybe two-ish. Uh, we're going to kind of like live broadcast the round of eight, and they're all going to be playing at the same time. Then we'll hold them off at the semifinals. So we'll cast both semifinals. Those are all going to be best of threes. And then we'll cast the finals, which will be best of five, and this, uh, the third, fourth place match for a best of five as well. Because there is going to be money for third place, no money for fourth place. Uh, but that is sort of the updates on any ladder hero so hopefully you guys 
tune in for that. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing how the first one goes. Uh, event is already up on TL calendar, so go ahead and check that out. Um, but besides that, what's uh, what else is coming up for me? I'm going to be casting the ASL uh, tomorrow. Or actually, I say tomorrow, but depending on your time zone, you might be uh, seeing this video when it already is today. I'm going to be casting it on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, July 29th, I guess, is going to be the date. So Wednesday, July 29th, I'm going to be casting ASL, and I should be joined by Tempo StarCraft. So if you guys want to tune in for that, that'd be awesome. Uh, I believe also Sunday, I'm going to be casting the Team Gravity Fight Night Tournament of Champions, which is a uh, kind of follow-up thing that Team Gravity Fight Night is doing to... Uh, they invite back a bunch of the people that have come on for the show matches and done well or won... And it's just basically like a tournament instead of like show match series for Team Gravity Fight Night. So really, really looking forward to that. And uh, besides that, putting a lot of time just kind of into uh, into the recent thing that I announced, which was uh, what something I'm calling the Organizers Alliance. Uh, also had the name Foreigner Jail for the first project of it, but uh, we're going to gloss over that one. There might be some rebranding or renaming on that because I didn't think it would blow up to be as big as it has been um in my mind it's i thought it was just going to be a starcraft thing it's going to be inside joke you know people talk about kespa jail and i wasn't really thinking about it from the context of someone who doesn't follow the starcraft scene doesn't know about the joke about kespa jail and stuff uh so i just thought foreigner jail that's a really funny name because you know it's a bunch of foreigners jailing people who you know upset the organizers uh, but you know, I, I think that we may end up doing some rebranding. I'll still uh, kind of discuss that with the people in the Organizers Alliance. But for those who don't know, Organizers Alliance, it's something that I assemble together of a lot of the more prominent organizers uh, for online tournaments in the StarCraft scene. And the idea is we want to cut back on the number of no-shows, disincentivize players from no-showing without some due notice. We don't want to be... Like, the objective of the Organizers Alliance and this whole project is not to force players into retirement and you know stop them from playing starcraft like that's not the objective the objective is to try and prevent them and give some consequence to players no showing for events because a lot of the times what we notice is players just don't feel like uh showing up for a lot of events is super important so they will kind of a lot of honestly a lot of the time very much unintentionally with no ill will toward the event organizers or anything they will just say oh you know I overslept, like, I, I didn't really, I forgot to wake up or whatever. Or, you know, oh, I totally forgot, like, I went out with my friends and I forgot that I had to play a match. If I had remembered, I would have been there, but I didn't. So, it's sort of to increase the amount of importance and create some sense of consequence so that it sticks in their mind. There's some reason why they say, okay, I need to make sure I remember that I have this match to play. Because it benefits the players, uh, it benefits the tournament organizers, obviously, because we don't have no-shows, uh, which means the broadcast is going to be better, we're going to have more stable broadcasts, the viewers get more to watch more games, we don't have situations where things like Shoutcraft Clan, and by the way, I'm just, I'm going off onto my topic, if that hasn't been clear, um, Shoutcraft Clan Wars have to be cancelled, partially, not entirely, but partially due to the fact that there were a lot of player no-shows, so, this is my sort of plan, and, uh, also, I mean, a lot of other people's plans, I guess, uh, getting in on this. But I started this initiative because I want to create a climate in StarCraft where we can do something like a foreigner Pro League style format. I I don't want to call them bad eggs, but I feel like a lot of a lot of events in StarCraft aren't possible because of the few players that no-show for tournaments a lot and do this kind of stuff. I don't think it's the majority of players. And even those few players, I think I'll, not all of them, but most of them aren't no-showing because of ill will or anything. It's just it's honest mistakes. And I think that it, this is something that might help that. Uh, in terms of the reception that Organizers Alliance has received... I think it's been a it start it's been mostly positive from viewers. There's been some mixed feedback from players. I've heard players who say this is actually a really good thing and they actually are on board with it and they think that we're not being strict enough. Uh, for those who don't know, we start off with a uh, rule saying that strikes would expire after three months and you could earn up to three strikes before being put in foreigner jail or as we're gonna re be rebranding it, uh, put into I don't know penalty box. Maybe we'll go to the penalty box. Penalty box sounds more uh, less less. Uh, I don't know, intrusive, less, uh, I don't even know what the word is. I can't even think right now, but regardless, 
I think that what we will end up doing and what we have ended up doing already, I think uh, we've already discussed this, we're going to be increasing the amount of time that strikes last from three months to nine months. So I want to note that this doesn't mean that if a player ends up being put in the penalty box or whatever we end up calling it, that they are now banned from participating in tournaments for nine months. That's actually not the case. It's very specifically something that we are trying to avoid because we don't want to be ending careers for players that don't make it into WCS. And then they also don't have online tournaments to play for. It's like the only thing you can do is play in like qualifiers for like big events. Like we don't want that to be the case. Uh, so you'd still go to whatever like the penalty box is for two months and then you would come out of there and you'd be able to participate in any events you wanted to. The only thing is you still have those three strikes on your record at the time or, you know, four strikes or whatever, depending on how many you actually ended up getting. But you still have all those strikes. So that means that if you get any additional strikes afterwards, you're kind of on a probation period until those strikes expire. Any additional strikes will just immediately put you back into the penalty box. So... There's a sense of consequence. There's a sense of, oh, you know, I think the, the biggest phrase that really stood out to me was something that uh, Liquid no or <laughs> Habit, not Liquid Noni, Noni said uh, in his post was, the way that I look at this as a player is I get to skip one event or no show for an event once a month. And that's definitely not the mentality we want to be sending a player. So we want to, if we can't stop them from thinking about it as I have X number of free passes, we at least want to make it so that they feel they should conserve those free passes. Because we do not want... We, we really thought about reducing the number of strikes from three strikes to two strikes. But we really dislike the idea that players who have very... Maybe like valid reasons. Because honestly, sometimes things do come up. And you know, your I don't know. Your parents... You realize it's your parents' anniversary or something. Or like your, your mom's birthday. And you're like, oh god, you know... I like really, really can't afford to play in this tournament for six hours today, even though I know I'd signed up for it and everything. And you know what? It's not a medical or family emergency. I know it's family emergency in the sense that you forgot your mom's birthday, which is a bit of a problem. But regardless, like, you know, maybe you want to take the strike there. It That kind of stuff happens. It shouldn't be happening very often, but it happens. We don't want to create a situation where a lot of players are just getting put into the penalty box because of simple things like that or i don't know you get stuck at you get like stuck somewhere because your car breaks down or i don't know something happens and like you couldn't make it like that we want to reduce the number of like accidental kind of things like that where a player knows that they have to play and they have to make a judgment call of what they need to do sometimes it may be their fault but we don't want to be overly over like the objective again is not to stop players from leading their normal lives or to stop them from playing StarCraft. That's the opposite of the objective. I consider the system to be a, a rousing success if we never have to jail anyone, but also if the number of strikes we're assigning and giving is fairly minimal. That is where I would consider the entire system to be a rousing success. Now, one sort of last thing that I want to talk about before we we'll kind of close out this Patreon vlog, because uh, I've probably, probably been talking for a little bit now, um, one thing I really want to do, and it's something that I know some people like Zeromus has actually, uh, talked about this, uh, through Twitter and everything and can try to communicate this to me, but I want this to be more than just let's regulate players. That's not what I want this uh, alliance to be. I want it to become something, first of all, much bigger. Uh, I, this is like an initial step of, Hey, let's get these tournament organizers together and communicating under um, something that we agree is a mutual issue and it's something that we can all kind of very easily band together on now we have like this community of organizers who are able to get their you know communicate with each other next step i want to do or maybe not the exact next step but things that i want to do in the future is reduce the number of overlaps that we have scheduled for our events like we are already you know there's not a huge huge number of community organizers for online events and stuff in the starcraft scene right now i think it's silly whenever i see you know two event organizers scheduling an event at the exact same time right over each other when easily one of them could have just scheduled it a day later but because they both scheduled it started planning everything out and then announced the dates 
and it turns out like it's too late for the either one of them to change it so now it's like oh man i guess these ev events are competing for viewership now like I, I think a lot of those situations can be avoided not all of them but i think some of them can be i think that also there's problems that uh for example kane's amazing thread actually it was a, it was a bit of a parody thread but i really really did think it was an important one uh, where he created a fake players union i hope someone actually does go and create an actual players union if I had the opportunity to, I wish I could spearhead that and make it happen, but obviously I'm sort of, I guess like, people will consider that I'm like a biased person now, so I can't really be the one to lead that. I wish I could, even if it was just a matter of getting the people together into like a group to, cut, to talk, and then just immediately saying, okay, you guys got this, alright, I'm leaving. Like, even if it, I had absolutely no part in the discussion, I wish I could at least get things rolling get the ball rolling on that um so if you are a player please get the ball rolling on that it's something that's really really worthwhile but until then one of the other objectives i have for this uh, whole organizers alliance is i want to start holding organizers also accountable i think that all the organizers we've handpicked all the organizers that uh, were let in to make sure that there were organizers that were relatively trustworthy like i don't think that any of the organizers in the alliance are you know constantly uh hold that thought i have a phone call <laughs> sorry about that but i don't want this to i want the organizers to also be held accountable so i don't want there to be a situation where organizers aren't paying out players or, you know there's all these other kinds of problems that organizers have so uh yeah hopefully we'll be able to make progress on that eventually we want to take it one step at a time we don't want to overstep and become overly ambitious as soon as this whole thing launches it's uh let's do one thing successfully and then we'll move on to the next thing and try and do that successfully instead of trying to save all of esports in one in one giant foul swoop because uh that's going to be a pretty foul swoop it's not it's not going to go very well more likely than not uh if we get too overly ambitious but i want to give a huge thank you to all my patreon supporters that would be techno trance kj freedom bubble convolute zizla zella sam galeo prone esl mr torrential halis halican uh oh fuck you syz adrenaline and uh joe from esports heaven thank you guys all so much for supporting me and if you guys do want to support me on patreon it's over at uh, twitch or uh, patreon.com slash fear giant 64 if you have spare income and you're up for supporting it feel free if you don't please don't there are so many other things also that you could support if you have you know money that you want to throw please like no harm done but uh, if you do want to support me i am very much appreciative of anyone who does but thank you guys so much for tuning in and uh keep keep starcrafting guys